In this video, I'm taking a deep dive into SuperSource, the Blackmagic ATEM feature that allows you to display up to four inputs on screen at once. I'll be showing you what you can do with it, how to set it up, third-party apps that you can use for controlling it, and sharing with you all my tips and tricks to get the very most from SuperSource. <laughs> So SuperSource is a fantastic feature that until recently was only found in Blackmagic's top of the line switches, but now they've given it to us in the A10 Mini Extreme and the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. And basically it allows you to show up to four inputs on screen at the same time and you can crop, resize and reposition each one of those inputs so that they're displayed exactly where you need on screen. It also gives you the ability to style the look of your whole super source shot by adding custom artwork that can be placed either in front of or behind your inputs. And this allows you to create highly professional looking split screens, two box, three box, or even four box layouts like you regularly see on news channels, for example. Now this type of shot is actually incredibly useful for a number of different situations. Like maybe you're interviewing someone and you wanna have both of you on screen at once or maybe you're giving a presentation and you want to display the slideshow and you on screen together. Or maybe you're bringing in a bunch of remote guests for a panel discussion and you want to have a shot that the audience can see all of the guests together on screen. The possibilities with SuperSource are pretty much endless. So let me show you how to set it up. I've loaded a bunch of cameras into my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. I've also opened up my ATEM software control because we're going to be using that a lot to set up the SuperSource. And I actually want to start by showing you how you bring the super source on air. And there's two ways to do it. You can either do it through the software or there is actually a button for it on the physical device itself. And the button that you're looking for is this one here, especially if you're looking in the software. It's labeled SSRC. And if you click on that, it will bring the super source on air. And I'll describe, you can see we've got four inputs showing here, although three of them are the same. You've also got the same SSRC, if I just flip back here, you've also got the same SSRC button on the physical device just next to the media player one and two buttons. There's a S slash SRC. If you press that, same thing happens. It brings the super source on air. And you're probably going to want it on air while you're working and adjusting it so you can make sure that things are in the right place. My first top tip as well is to actually put super source in your multi view so that when you are doing a show, you can see exactly what's on your super source because it doesn't come in the multi view as default. So what I'm going to do is to do that, you just click on the settings cog in the ATEM software control in the bottom left hand side. And then I'm just going to replace my media player two here. Click on the drop down menu and select super source. And then you can hit done. And once you do that, a live preview of what is in your super source at the moment will be displayed on your multi view. And that's really easy to have because as you're sort of cutting around your show and showing, showing your other inputs, you can still see what's lined up ready to go if you were to cut over to super source. So that's my first sort of top tip. But let's get stuck into sort of setting it up. So you're going to want to go into the ATEM software control and you're going to want to come over to the palette menu here and then click on super source. Now, Blackmagic have included four sort of presets that you can use to get started. And if I just bring my super source on air, we can take a look at those. So we've got the, this, this four box that we're using at the moment. That's the first preset. And I'll talk about how you change what goes in each one of these boxes, because you can change obviously the inputs that are in each, but this is just the layout. So that's this one. You've also got similar, but with two shrunk, smaller and shrunk. You've got a two box layout, which is quite nice for interviews or again, showing presentations while you're also showing a camera feed. And then there's this quite nice one with a crop as well, which uh, this is sort of a three box layout, but a crop on the main camera. That works quite well with this shot actually. But those are the presets that are built in. But for most people, you're gonna completely wanna customize your own. I always like to personally use foreground graphics. I mentioned in the beginning that you can have graphics either behind the video sources as the background, or you can have them as the foreground. I tend to do it as the foreground, uh, unless I'm doing a moving background. I'll show you both in this video, but to start, we'll go with foreground. So what I like to do is I come into Photoshop here and I've just knocked up a little fake tech summit example of what our super source shot is going to look like. And so I've created this back, this foreground graphic. And where the camera feeds are going to go are where the transparent areas are. So I've created a nice 16 by 9 box here and I put a, a sort of board around it. And that's going to be for my overhead shot. 
That's the big shot that I want my audience to see. And then I'm going to put my sort of face cam in this smaller, again, 16 by 9 box. Uh, and this is just a PNG image that I've made in Photoshop. And then what I'm going to do is go File. If you've installed the ATEM software control and you've got Photoshop, there's a great plugin that basically allows you to send this graphic to your ATEM media pool. So you go to File, Export, and then ATEM Switcher Media Pool. It automatically installs that plugin for you when you install the ATEM software control. You put in the IP address of your switcher and select where in the media pool you want it to go. So in my case, I'm going to click on the empty slot number one, give it a name, and then just hit Export. And you can see what that's done because if we go into the ATEM software control, and go over, we're still in the super source menu here, but click on art. It's using whatever's in media player one as our source. And this is where you have the option to set whether it's foreground or background. And as I say, we're working with foreground at the moment. So that's brought that into the super source here, exactly what we wanted it to do. But what we can see is the positioning of the actual boxes aren't quite right in the right place. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna fix that now. I will just flip over and show you what it looks like if it was the background. So there we go. You can see the video sources now come in front, and I'm gonna do a demo uh, with the background as well because it do doesn't have to just be stills backgrounds. You can actually use video backgrounds as well, and I'll show you how to do that later on in this video. But let me switch it back onto foreground because now we're gonna position these boxes where we need. So if we go back over to preset, and we're gonna start with box number one. Now there's a few things to just, here's my sort of second tip um, to remember is specifically with this layout as well, we actually need one box on top of the other. So you can see in the corner where the mini box sort of overlaps the main box, we're going to need some sort of layering. So the way it works with the uh, ATEM or, or super source in general is box number one is the top layer, then it goes box number two, box number three and box number four as the bottom layer. So if you're ever wanting to have something sort of overlap and on top of another camera source, that's how it goes. The highest layer is box number one and the lowest layer is box number four. So that means in our case, we actually need our uh, mini, our, our sort of face camera here to be box number one because we want it to be above the, um, the overhead shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, just check that we've got the other two layers disabled. Yeah, box four and box three are disabled because we're not using those. And then we'll start with that small layer, that box number one. And we'll make sure that's enabled. We'll select the camera source, which actually is correct. We want it to be camera two, but this is where you would select what camera you want in that box. So you could change it to anything. So we could go color bars here. It doesn't just need to be a camera as well. You've got the option of selecting your eight inputs color bars or different colors or the media players as well. And uh, for some interesting reason, you can put a super source inside a super source. Not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but hey, you can do it. So let's continue on with camera two. And now we need to reposition it because we want to get it down into that small area. Now you can see me clicking on these up and down arrows in the ATEM software control. That's a really laborious way of moving it around. Not very accurate either. I know some people who also come into the ATEM software control here and start typing in numbers uh, and try and get it a bit closer. Uh, and that works, but again, it's a very slow, laborious task. So here's my sort of second tip when you're wanting to move things around in the ATEM software control, which is take your mouse pointer and over any of the places where it says X and Y for position, you can hover your mouse over the X or the Y and you can see it turns into a little arrow there. And then if you click and drag left to right, we've got much more granular control over that box. So now I'm going to drag it roughly in the right place. And it works exactly the same. If you hover over size, you can drag again. You have to drag left to right, not up and down. It's always left to right. Drag left to right. And you can adjust the size as well. So we're going to get this roughly in the right position here. And then I'm going to show you how I personally check that my shots are in the right position. So I think we need to come a little more left. I think that's about right. And it certainly looks right on the screen. But what I actually do to check it is I go back into art and just set the art as the background for a second, because then that will allow us to see. Oh, we'll just disable that first box because it's, oh, that's the second box because it's in the way. But what we can see there, see, I thought it was in the right position, but actually it's still too big. So I'll just shrink it down a little more 
and bring it over to the left again. And that is in the right position now. So now we can flip back, go back to foreground and all's in the right place. So that's that first camera shot done. And that's the top layer because it's box number one. Now we can bring back box number two. So it will enable that layer. And you can see it's below, it's not covering up that um, my face camera. It, it's because it's layer number two, it's underneath it, which is exactly what we want. So now we're gonna just, again, reposition and resize this. There we go. Now, of course, it doesn't need to be perfect because once you set it back to the foreground, the graphic's going to cover anywhere where it was too big. But I like to get it as close as possible. Then you know you're getting the maximum shot in the correct area. And we've got our super source layout there. It's a nice two box. We've got um, one of the benefits of also having it as a foreground is we then can add text to the image and things like that. We can also still use our DSKs as well. So I've got a little lower third here and that I've quickly made in Photoshop. And again, if I go to export, ATEM switcher, and I'll put this in slot number two and say set to media player two. Now, if I enable, if I go back and enable my DSK for media player two, nah, didn't quite get the sizing right, but you get the idea. You can also display text over the top of this as well. So you can still use your DSKs uh, as well even though you are using super source and you can use your upstream keys as well and we'll talk a little bit about that because there is a way to actually have six camera feeds on screen by using super source plus your two dves as well your two picture in pictures uh, but i'll cover that a little bit later on um so we, we very quickly made a super source layout a two box layout with uh, a foreground i just want to show you how to do it quickly with the background as well because i want to show you a video background and that's really simple to do I've actually got a preset here which I'll use it's in my macros so I'll just quickly run this macro there we go so what you're seeing on screen now is a four box super source and they are different sources I, I don't quite have like enough I've used a couple of different color bars for sources but you've got my main camera here is the the large source you've got the the main face camera here and then I've got uh, camera 8 is the top one the one above me and then I am just using color bars and again I can go into the super source settings uh, and change any one of these so I can change the color bar to camera 4 and get another another shot of me there and maybe we'll change what is camera 8 we'll change that to camera 3 which is my ATEM software control. And you can see it's very easy to do, but you might be able to notice we also have a moving background. And that is because if you look at my multi-view coming in on camera seven is actually my hyperdeck player, which is just over here. And I've just rendered out a 10 second looping video and I send that into camera seven. And then this is the difference. So now when we go into, into the super source settings and go to art, I've set it to be in the background but I've importantly set the fill source not to be a media player. I could still do that. So if I select media player, that's what it would look like. Things aren't in the right place. But I'm actually saying instead, take the feed from camera seven, which is my hyperdeck. And that is how I'm getting a looping video background. So that's a nice little, again, nice little tip. If you do want a looping background, it's very easy to do. You don't have to have a hyperdeck for it. You could use, I've done videos on how to send uh, from OBS videos from uh, from OBS into the ATEM, you could do that. Um, there's iPad apps and things like that, and I'll talk about that in a future video as well, that you can use for getting looping videos into your ATEM and then used as a background on Supersource. And again, of course, all of these boxes are fully customizable. We can reposition them, resize them, or crop them. Uh, just an example here, we'll take the large box and we'll enable the crop. And then again, same as we did before, we can just hover over at the top, the bottom, the left or the right, and then click and drag to start adjusting the crop. You have to do, you have to drag quite a lot with the crop ones because they make small increments. So what I tend to do is use the, or type in a rough number. So maybe we'll start on eight, for example. And then once you've got it close, then I do the click and drag to get the sort of granular settings here. Now, the final thing I want to show, because I get this question quite a lot, which is, can I have any more than four on screen at the same time? With Supersource, four is your maximum. However, 
you can then still use your two DVEs on top of that. So you can use your two upstream keyers and bring on two picture in pictures. I'll just show you, show you that. So what I'm going to quickly do is reposition this larger box. They're doing this very rough, but somewhere around here. And then we're going to go, we can close the super source tab now. We're going to open up upstream key one and we're going to go to DVE. And I'm just going to bring that on air. We'll get rid of the border and we will again, just reposition this here. Personally, I wouldn't advise having six boxes on screen. I feel like that's quite overpowering and a lot for someone or an audience to, to look at, but I'm just showing you that it can be done. So we'll select another source here, which will be my camera five. Uh, I don't have the camera on at the moment. It's my, yeah, I can switch it on. It's my black magic pocket cinema with a Hollyland receiver here. So once it connects, you'll be able to see, there we go. We are getting that feed in perfectly fine as well. This is my wireless camera. So we'll stick that on the, uh, well, I've shown it to you now. And then let's do one more. So all we need to do is do exactly the same, go into key two, go to DVE, we'll select a source here, which in this case will be camera, uh, I'll set it to color bars. We'll turn it on. And again, we'll get rid of the border and we'll resize that and put it somewhere on the screen. So now on the screen, what we have doesn't look great, but we could resize all of these and, and make them fit a layout. But what you're actually seeing is six camera feeds, you can see on the screen there, plus a video background. And that is the max that you can do, <laughs> but that's how you would do it. Now, the biggest question I get, especially when it comes to SuperSource is, how do I save and then recall my SuperSource layouts? And I'm gonna show you the best way that I've found to date, and I've been doing this for about four years, and I would never see anyone talking about this at all. So I thought I'm gonna share my, again, my tip for saving and recalling super sources, um, because it's, in my opinion, the easiest and the quickest way. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna call this Four Box Small, because the box isn't so big in the middle, so Four Box Small. Hit save, and this is the important bit. At the top, click the button that says select none. And then you're gonna go down and just tick super source and hit save. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create an XML file that has all of the data for this super source layout in. And here's the trick. So if you wanted to, let's say we just went, I'm gonna click the uh, Blackmagic preset to reset things completely to a four box. If you wanted to, you can just, whenever you wanted to use that, go up to File, Restore, select that file, so four box small, hit Restore, and then when you hit the, the Restore button, you'll see it change, ready? There we go, brings back our thing. So yeah, you can do that, and that is how I've seen quite a lot of people doing it. But I find it a lot easier to turn that Restore file into a macro. And you can either do it by copying the XML and, and creating a macro out of it, or the way that I do it, which is a lot faster and I've never seen anyone talk about, is to actually create the macro within the ATEM software control. It's the easiest way. So again, I'm gonna bring up the preset menu, just so that it's different from the one that we actually want. Now here's what we've done. We've saved our super source XML file, that's saved to my desktop. So now I'm gonna record a macro. So I'm gonna go to macros, select the macro, and there's two that I've recorded here before, plus um, uh, another macro. So I've got three macros already. I'm gonna go to create, click on my fourth empty space here, and we're gonna call this uh, super source for small, wasn't it? There we go. Click record. And make sure you don't do anything else at this point, but follow these instructions carefully. Now that it's recording, go up to file, click restore, move the macros bar out of the way, click on that four box small file that you created before and then click restore and then hit the restore button, go through that process. Once the restore is complete, where it says 100% complete down at the bottom, then stop your macro from recording and your macro will be saved. 
Now watch what happens. I've got three different macros here, one or two which use the video background and one which uses the, the media player background. And I can very, very quickly, now that they're all saved in the macros, switch between them. So we're going to select recall and run. We're going to go to the one I created earlier, which is this bigger layout. Then we're going to go to the small one, which we've just done. And you'll notice it's changing everything. Everything, all the camera, cameras that are in the boxes, the box sizes, the positions. It's setting it exactly how, it, how we left it or how we saved it. So we can flip between those two, but we can also flip between the other layout we did there. So it's a really, really simple and easy way of jumping or saving multiple Supersource layouts and recalling them very quickly. And of course, because this is now available on the ATEM Mini Extreme and the Extreme ISO, you've got macro buttons on the front of your device. So as long as you've saved these Supersource layouts as macros for the first six macros, you can use the physical buttons on the device. So your macro buttons are here on the A10 Mini Extreme. You've got six of them, and I've programmed two, three, and four for my super source layout. So if I hit macro button number two, you can see it jumped straight to the very first super source design that we did. Number three was the second one, and then number four was the one that we just saved out, which has the smaller layout. And that's a real easy way of jumping between super source layouts. And it's certainly the easiest and the quickest way that I have seen to date. So you can see it's a really quick, simple and easy way of not just saving your Supersource layouts, but very quickly recalling them when you need them as well. Before I move on to some of the more advanced things that you can do with Supersource like animation, let me talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. With topics like film and video, graphic design, illustration, photography, marketing, and many more, it's an amazing way to get started learning something new or grow your skills by learning from experts. So if you're looking to learn about animation, for example, then Jake Bartlett's Animating with Ease in After Effects course is the one for you. Or maybe you want to up your YouTube game. If so, definitely check out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class. I'm taking it at the moment and have found it so useful when it comes to writing my scripts and planning out my videos. And I know many of you who watch my videos for black magic stuff are looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Well, Skillshare has a number of classes for both color grading and editing that are perfect for beginners. Like this DaVinci 17 course from Mustafa Nassar. He's created short but detailed videos explaining each section of DaVinci and all of the effects and functions built into it. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because I've teamed up with Skillshare on this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So everything we've seen with Supersource so far is, is pretty static. Once you've got the boxes saved in their layouts, they don't tend to move. But one of the big demands that has been for Supersource for years is, well, can I make the, the boxes sort of move around the screen while Supersource is on air? Maybe they get bigger when someone's talking. Maybe I'm able to animate off boxes when I don't need them and things like that. So like these dynamic animations. And in the past, when you... Or if you wanted to do that, I remember about two years ago, it took me about two days to build a very small animation of like something shrinking and another box coming in because you had to keyframe it yourself. You basically had to create a macro that puts the box in the right position, then paused for one second. Then you moved the box a few pixels, added another pause in and you keep, kept doing that until it's in the right end position. And it was a, a pain to do. But now there's a new app on the block. Uh, this app is called, I've got it on my iPad, it's called Mix Effect. And it does a lot more than Supersource, but one of the things it does really well is animation for Supersource. The Supersource function is a paid function, but there's a 30 day free, free trial, so it's worth checking out. Basically what you've got here in the iPad app, you can see here I'm in the Supersource section. As I say, it does a lot more. We've got a switcher at the top here where I can switch things. We can fire off macros but I'm just going to go into the super source section and I've got a live representation down here of my super source. And when I say live, watch this, I can click on, let's say camera two and actually move it around with my finger. So this is another way that I can create super source layouts, positioning them with uh, my finger on the iPad. But one of the things it does really well is you can actually, it comes with a bunch of presets and you can make your own. So if I scroll up to the top here, 
Watch what happens when I click on this foregrid. It's not just going to cut to the foregrid. It's going to animate. Look at that. Look how cool that is. And it's the same with all of these. So I can mix to a four horizontal, for example. And it will do all the cropping dynamically. Uh, we can go to maybe we just expand that out a little bit, make it full screen. Or maybe we go back to, to how we were before. Or maybe we want to have just three boxes on screen now. There we go. It drops one, makes us all bigger. So these are the types of animation that before would have taken days to build. But now, this is great. Uh, now, it's all done for you in an app. And as I say, these are all pre-built presets that you can use straight out the box. But you can customize and build your own. So I could go, for example, let's just go from a full screen of me. Uh, actually, that's me. So I can go from a full screen of me here to maybe a two shot vertical and then back to a full screen of me. And then maybe we want four people on screen at once. So let's find that. Bam. It's great. It works brilliant. Now I just want to show you how I can customize one of these really quickly. So I'm going to go scroll down to box number three and disable that or we'll disable box number four as well. We'll maybe make me again a little smaller. And in this side of the screen, me, uh, the overhead shot a little bigger and maybe about there. Great. So we've got that layout now. I can click the plus button here, then give it a name. So we'll say two or overhead shot, overhead, click OK. And that's now saved in my library. I've got quite a lot, but it's, uh, it's there. You can see it overhead. So we've got that saved there and we can go from that to another shot there and then back to the overhead when we're ready. So I think you guys can see when you use the Mix Effects app, you not just get an easy sort of drag and drop way of creating your super source layouts, but you also get an easy way of creating and saving them as presets, which you can then jump to all your presets really quickly with the added bonus as well that they animate between each other. So it looks really nice. Um, yeah, Adam, who's built this app, has done a real good job. So if you want to check it out, it's available on the uh, App Store. You can download it now for free. And as I say, if you want to try this specific feature out, it is part of the, the pro plan, but there is a 30 day free trial to give it a go. So there you have it. I've tried to cram as much super source knowledge and information as I possibly can in one video. So if you did find this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up because that tells me that it was useful and you want to see more videos like this. Also, if you've got any questions that weren't answered in this video but are still bugging you, feel free to put them in the comments below. I read through all of them and will try to reply to as many of them as possible. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos like this one appear on my channel. And finally, if you've got any setup questions or need help with your workflow, you can ping me an email on the email address on screen now. We'll get those issues sorted for you and make sure that your setup is working how it should be. Once you've done all that, guys, I'll see you on the next one.